A warm welcome to the Uxbridge FM History Show. And it's a pleasure, as usual, to welcome Ken Pierce, local historian, chairman of the Uxbridge Local History Society. How are you, Ken? Uh, very well, thank you. Great stuff. Now, the first talk today, we're doing Uxbridge in the stagecoach era. When you're ready. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Well, today, Uxbridge is full of cars. In the past, it was full of horses. There must have been several hundred in the immediate area of the town. So let me take you back today to the 1830s, the great age of the stagecoach. Uxbridge, of course, was a market town, 15 miles from London, on the ancient highway to Oxford. So in the 1830s, a stream of stagecoaches passed through the high street from dawn until dusk. There was as yet no railway. The Grand Junction Canal had opened about 30 years before, but goods transported on it were bulky, like coal or timber and bricks. Progress on it was steady but slow. Everything else went by horse-drawn traffic. We are very fortunate here because an account of life in the town in the 1830s has survived. Giles Hudson, H-U-T-S-O-N, was a boy then, and his family had premises in the high street not far from the market house. His father was a saddler and harness maker, and so very much involved with the horse trade. So Giles grew up right in the centre of things, well aware of what was going on. He knew the several large coaching inns, the yards, the stables and the outbuildings. He knew those whose lives depended on the coaching trade, the innkeepers, the horse dealers, blacksmiths, ostlers, saddlers, veterinaries and coachmen. Oh, unfortunately, Giles has left us with an account of a typical day in Uxbridge in the coaching era. So let me read it to you now. At 4.30 a.m., the horn of the guard on the mail coach was heard, arousing the postmaster who handed out the letter bags for London and took in those from Worcester and intermediate places. The mail coach was quickly followed by the Paul Pry, a Gloucester coach, then the Telegraph from Worcester, the Union from Hereford, and the Green Gloucester, so-called because it was painted green, and others. At eight o'clock, Green's pair horse coach came in from West Drayton and Tollett's two pair coaches from Harefield and Charfond. Their passengers helped to make up the loading of coaches from the King's Arms and the Three Tons. These plied between Uxbridge and London only. At nine o'clock, a four horse coach from Wickham came through and at 9.30 another from the same place. Then came one from Hereford, two from Woodstock, and others from Leamington, Banbury, Birmingham and Tame, and several more from Oxford. They, many of them had romantic names. The Age, the Royal William, the Tam O'Shanter, the Tan Tivy, the Isis, the Tally Ho, and the Oxonian were all Oxford coaches. These were followed by the Regulator, the Retaliator, the Royal Oak, and the Harkaway, all long distance coaches. And then the Mazeppa, a double bodied coach. And while these were all passing through the town, others were coming back from London, for each passed through daily on its way to and from the metropolis. This long procession was brought to an end each day by the mail coach arriving in Uxbridge at 10 o'clock at night. 
Well, there's Giles's account of a typical day in the coaching era. The average speed of travel was about 10 or 12 miles an hour. And of course, in addition to all the coaches, about 40 a day, other vehicles were passing along the high street. There were tradesmen, carts and wagons, farm carts, even small carts drawn by dogs until the practice was made illegal. Sheep and cattle also passed through on their way to market because they walked all the way to their destination and often appeared tired and wasted after travelling long distances. So you can imagine the main street was usually congested and there were frequent hold-ups and delays at peak times. I assure you, Uxbridge High Street was a very busy place in the coaching era. Well, thanks, Ken. And I reckon uh, 10 to 12 miles an hour hasn't moved on much since then, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Not at peak periods, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you very much. And uh, join us Thank again you. shortly for another talk coming up.